got a Fox News alert, and I wish I didn't have to tell you this, but we have a live look outside Paris, not for the scenery, but because we have another attack, a desperate manhunt is at this hour right now for the driver who deliberately, reportedly, plowed into at least six anti-terror unit soldiers on patrol before fleeing the scene in his BMW. Here to, to reflect on this, yet another attack in a major western city is former CIA operative Mike Baker, former CIA station chief Daniel Hoffman, and security analyst with Kyrian Project Ryan Morrow. Let's start with you, Mike. How do you stop this? Guy jumps out of a subway three weeks, a, a month or two ago right. with a knife. Somebody else steams over people in a car. What's going on? Yeah, the, the answer, and it's unsatisfying, is you, you can't stop. What are you going to do? You're going to lock down traffic and, you know, search every vehicle. And, and uh, it's not going to happen. You can't minimize this risk down to zero. Uh, and, you know, honestly, the, the French authorities, the, the security services are very good at what they do. But this is the world we live in and you know we, we try to minimize disrupt and prevent but you're not going to stop everything uh ryan uh, ramadan's over we saw the four events in uh one in london in paris and uh, <laughs> about three in in england and we thought okay ramadan's over it'll, it'll ratchet down it's not Right. Well, there is that spike during Ramadan. That's just because they believe that the reward when you go to paradise is higher if you die in jihad during that time period. But look, these are people that think that they're going to cleanse their sin from their lives if they commit jihad, die in jihad. And that's the way that they're going to get Allah's approval. And so that's a year round dilemma that they have to deal with. But get ready for the process here, because we see this happen every single time. What happens? They say it's a lone wolf. And then all of a sudden that gets debunked because several people get arrested and it's part of a network. Uh, Daniel, uh, right now, how do we react in the U.S. when this happens again in one of our allied cities? Well, I think the first reaction has to happen in Paris. And what we would be doing in Paris is working very closely with our French liaison partners just to try to determine uh, the facts. What Are we there, you think, already? Uh, our, our, our team is there at the embassy, working very closely with f French liaison with whom we have a close partnership so that we can determine what the facts are. Uh, and also determine whether we need to issue any follow-on warnings inside France because this might not have been the only attack planned. All right, let's uh, shift to the other major crisis. And yesterday, <coughs> the Washington Post breaks a story, not uh, all but confirmed, that not only can, do they have ICBM capabilities in North Korea, but they can put a miniaturized nuclear warhead on a missile. So this is a game changer uh, for a lot of American cities and territories. And then we find out that the President of the United States came out, and I believe it was scripted, and essentially uh, ratcheted up the rhetoric significantly. Mike, does this help or hurt? Well, I think the, the comments about, you know, unleashing fire and fury, I, I don't know. It's speculation as to whether it's scripted or not. Uh, I don't know that if it's unscripted that it's helpful, uh, but it is what it is. It's been said, so you're not going to put that back in the box. The, the interesting thing is as soon as this DIA report came out, and they tend to be thoughtful and, and conservative in their analysis, so I think the prudent thing is to assume that the DIA information about the numbers uh, is correct. But as soon as it came out, you started to hear this, this conversation, this narrative about, I, I can't believe this, this happened so quickly. I can't believe this, you know, we've ratcheted up to this point so quick. This is not. This is decades of right. kicking the can down the road. Daniel, what, what, I, what I find amazing is they're focusing on Donald Trump and his rhetoric, fire and fury. When Ronald Reagan's going after Gaddafi, he says he's a barbarian and he's flaky. He's the mad dog of the Middle East. People gave him some room and respect. The president is trying to speak in the language that uh, Kim Jong-un maybe understands because complimenting him two months ago didn't go so well. Right. I think while we look at our wide array of options, including sanctions, uh, for example, it, deterrence is really important. And when the president makes a statement like this, there has been an element of rhetorical escalation. And it's actually for the CIA, it would be a good opportunity for collection to see how the regime in uh, North Korea responds. But it's important for the United States to lay out very clearly how we would respond in the event of a North Korean attack. I believe the pressure on China is key and telling the South Koreans you're getting more THAAD missiles, telling uh, Japan we're going to bolster your defense, telling Taiwan we're going to be there. That's everything yeah. China doesn't want. Yeah, and also empowering the North Korean people. I mean, I don't see any effort right now to try to build an alternative government, try to rally behind North Koreans uh, in order to solve this problem. So it's not just about nuclear weapons. It's about the regime itself. And by the way, to me, there's two headlines here. The first headline is North Korea miniaturized the nuclear warhead. And then the second headline is Iran miniaturized the nuclear warhead. Anything that North Korea does, we have to under, operate under the assumption that Iran has that same exact technology. It is one program. They are not separate. That is absolutely correct. And this, this is the story that's not getting reported 
at all is the fact that if you allow a regime, whether it's North Korea or Iran, over the years through failed policies or through just willingness to allow them to continue because you at some point you're hoping that it'll go away as a problem, this is where you get to. The decision tree you get, keeps getting smaller and smaller, meaning we have fewer and fewer options. So we've basically done the sanctions route, and now we're at that point because we've allowed this to get here over the years. The Bush administration, the Clinton administration, the Obama administration, all this time, and now we have almost no options. Pass the sanctions, we got to think, what are our military options right. short of war? And Dan, just want you to wait in because i got to toss quick, but basically Donald Trump was handed a grenade and they pulled the pin, and he's forced to deal with that grenade right now. I mean, there are very few options. Mike is right. On the military side, uh, look, North Korea is not going to negotiate the end of their nuclear program. It's an existential element of Kim Jong-un's national security strategy. It leaves us very few options. And if we were to take military action, we've got to be sure to, to target all of those nuclear weapons. If we leave any behind, then there's a, a threat an ongoing threat to the region and to us at it's home. It's going to happen all in microseconds. Great job, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much. 23